Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to our Thursday night service here at Hegwish. You know, for the last service, I started doing some uh, verse by verse. I love verse by verse teaching because almost every verse, not every verse, of course, but almost every verse is another topic. It, it's not just, you know, there are there are topical preachers that are out there. There are verse by verse uh, expounding from the word of God. I, I, I don't always consider myself, you know, one of the brighter teachers that are out there. So I've always loved uh, just going verse by verse through the word of God. I know Brother Charlie does that. And, I, you know, um, I've been wanting, um, I shouldn't say I've been, but the Lord's been having me do a lot of topics lately. And, and I love topics also. Uh, but I've been enjoying this verse by verse, and so we're going to continue to do a little bit more verse by verse on Thursdays. Uh, I was I had a plan to get to Romans chapter 15 because we're going to be back in Romans uh, chapter 12 here uh, for the message tonight. Uh, picking back up where we started, we actually did start in Romans uh, chapter 11, verse 33. Oh, the depth, the extent. If you look it up in the Greek, that word depth it means the extent. Uh, of the riches, the the um, the blessings, so to speak, all the depth of the riches, both of what the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past of us being able to find out, and that's a really. I mean, all verses are important, but this is a very, very, this is one of those that kind of inches its way to the top of importance because it's monumental. I mean, there's just so many teachings that we have from the Word of God uh, that we find out that God's people, us, our brethren, are doing something that God's not doing. And it's not that they're doing wrong. They're just not doing what God wants, because that's all that matters. You know, Jesus told us early on that he came to do the Father's will. Jesus could have healed everybody that he went up to. Jesus could have, well, I'm, Je the Jesus we know as the, as the Savior. But, you know, when Jesus walked the earth, he was just a guy. He was just, he was a person, a human being like us. He didn't have magical powers, okay? He didn't have a get-out-of-jail free card in his back pocket. Uh, Jesus, you know, the, the first miracle that he performed, now, you know, now in his glory, you know, he can speak anything into existence uh, that he wants to, because he is part of the creation. In fact, all the worlds were hung in place by Jesus Christ. But when he came here as a man, to endure such contradiction of sinners against himself, to when he would be reviled, he would teach us to not revile back by him not doing that. Could he have done it? That's one of the reasons why a lot of us like the song, you know, he could have called 10,000 angels because he could have, but he didn't. And he didn't because he came to do the will of the Father. And in the model prayer, we're taught our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Let your will be done. And this is the model prayer. I know the Catholic Church butchers, butchers this up for us, but it really is the format of our prayers. You know, Father, woohoo, you know, wow, thank you that you, we, we in, our, in our finite being, understanding, are able to see a verse like this, oh, the depth of the riches of what? The wisdom and knowledge of God, and how unsearchable are his judgments, and his ways are past finding out. We can't. We can only know the things about God that God wants us to know. And that's the problem that comes into Christianity today, is that there's a whole bunch of people out there that are smart, a lot smarter than I am. They've been to Bible college or they've been to cemetery. I mean, they've been to seminary and, and they've learned all these things. They know all the stories. Maybe they grew up 
in a Christian home. I did not. I grew up in a Catholic home, but I didn't know anything about the Bible stories. And, and you know, they can rattle off this, that, and the other thing and tell you what God is doing. But what God is doing for me tonight, I, I can promise you, is going to be different from the 30-some that are with us also tonight. God is individually building our lives. He doesn't want us to be robots. I will do what Simon says. No, he doesn't want us to be like that. He wants us to be individual men and women of God who are growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, who are growing in the gender of who we are, even though we're equal now in the New Testament, men and women are equal with God. There's not one man or woman that is more blessed, that is that is more loved or accepted than, than another one. Now, we may, we may be walking in different blessings, but that's because of our obedience with the, with the Word of God. But when it comes to us on an individual basis, God is working in our lives because it is God who knows, because some of us are up and outers. Some of us are down and outers. Some of us operate more sideways than vertically. You know, some of us, you know, I learned a long time ago when, uh, um, when I when I was having a dealing with more death, you know, uh, after I became a pastor and, and, um, but I learned that people grieve differently and it's, it was a real eye opening for myself because, you know, I mean, everybody should grieve like I grieve. I mean, grieving, oh, that's just, you know, horrible, but it's not that way with everybody. And that's okay. Cause we're all different. Even though we're all one in Christ. Uh, we read last week, uh, that the hand can't be the eyes, the eyes can't be the ears, the ears can't be the nose. We all have a different function within the body of Christ. And how are you and I ever going to know what the Lord is doing in our lives if we're desiring other people's things? If, if we listen to the myriad of different teachings that are out there, uh, that the people are, these teachers are just trying to pound into our heads, that God wants us to be like other people when we don't know that. Now, there's a formula here, and I'm going to get to that here in just a second. The stepping stones to holiness. There are stepping stones to glory, okay? Just, just as Pilgrim uh, found out in, in his pilgrimage to the celestial city, uh, which was John Bunyan's book on Pilgrim's Progress. If you've not read that or listened to that, do that. One of the best written stories ever about who we are and what the devil tries to do in our lives to slow us down, to bind us down, and how the Lord delivers us from these things and how we get out of these things on our journey up to heaven. Uh, and so I said all that to say this, <laughs> excuse me, over in 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, you don't have to turn there, but the Lord spoke unto Samuel and he says, he, they're looking for a king. And he says, don't look upon his countenance. Now we do, you know, when, let's face it, brothers and sisters, when we see something that is appealing, we're drawn to it. Whether it be a person, a place, or a thing, it could be a piece of fruit. We're all, we're all fruit examiners. When we go to the store, you know, we pick it up, we squeeze it, we look at it, we turn it upside down around us. You know, is it is it pleasing to us? Is it, is it one of those that we would choose? It's okay to be like that because that's how we are. We, you know, our senses, the way we see, the way we smell, the way we taste, the way we feel, and the way we hear. Those are our basic, there are more, but those are our basic five senses that help us. It, that's how our world is governed in our life. But we now live also in another world. It's a spiritual world. And it's hard to examine fruit. It's hard to make judgments. That's why the Word of God teaches so much about us not judging other people. Even the Apostle Paul says, he says, I don't judge my own life. What? Well, then how, how, does, he, how does he get along? Well, he doesn't have to judge his own life. We don't have to judge our own life either. Why? Because the Word of God already judges us. It tells us yay and nay. It tells us right and wrong. It tells us good and bad in our lives, individually, for each one of us. 
the Holy Spirit, when we became born again, when when our spirit was quickened, made alive, part made alive, part of that aliveness came into our conscience, and our conscience scans. It looks. For those that are old enough to remember the old cartoons where you had the devil on one show in a you know, the devil was on one shoulder, angel on the other. You know, the devil wanted the, the cartoon character to do the bad, and the angel wanted to do the right and the good. Well, that's very similar to what we have in our lives today. The Holy Spirit, we it scans a situation, and then it leads us. It guides us. And in that leading and, give, and guiding, it provides for us to do the right thing. Now, many of us don't also realize that, you know, probably – the second or third greatest blessing we've ever received from the Lord in our life is a thing called volition, or better known as free will. To whomsoever, Romans 6.16, we give ourselves over, servants to obey, his servants we are to whom we obey, whether of sin or death, or of obedience unto righteousness. So we can choose right or wrong in our lives. We can choose to listen or not. We can choose to conform. We can choose to assent, to, to allow the Lord to lift us up. Instead of us lifting ourselves up to the Lord, the Lord lifts us up into a place where he'll provide and guide us. But listening to other people sometimes, you know, we want to lift up ourselves. It's how the church today is going after the blessings and not the blesser. We need to go after the blesser first. But God told Samuel, he says, don't, don't look <clears throat> upon his countenance, nor on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. I'm talking about Saul. For the Lord seeth not as we seeth. For the Lord looketh on, for man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And we can notice people's hearts sometimes. We can notice the sweetness of their heart. We can notice a little bit of their conformity, you know, to the things of the word of God. That's the wonderful thing about testimony time it is, wow, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. There's a lot of things to say so about. Let people know what the Lord's doing in your life. People, we need to hear on a, you know, we're only here on Thursdays and Sundays. You know, we need to hear on a daily basis. We forget. Wow. I mean, I can't. I, the stories I could tell you over the years of people who I know love the Lord and are close to the Lord and desire, you know, to be a better Christian. And the Lord does something in their life. And they're just, wow, you know, like, you know, like having the best meal they've ever eaten or, or you know, the most wonderful thing that could ever happen to them. And the next day they're doubting the Lord. Well, that may even be me sometimes. You know, it's great to be up on the mountaintop. Because well, what happens up there? Well, there's nothing up there to eat. There's nothing up there for shelter. There's nothing up there to calm us. There's nothing. I mean, it's, it's on the top of the mountain. There's so many things that are swirling around us. And the Lord takes care of all those things. And we just stand in a horrible spot just so blessed, just everything's so good. And the Lord then says, well, it's time that, you know, I teach you this. And he takes us down into the valley, through the valley of the shadow of death, as we know it from the word of God. And there's all kinds of demons down there. There's all kinds of bad things, obstacles, things that, that oh, we don't want to have in our lives. And, and, but that's where the Lord's trying to teach us. That's where the Lord's trying to bring these things into our lives. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faith, goodness, temperance, me meekness. You know, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion. That's why the Apostle Paul prayed in Ephesians 1 for those at Ephesus that God would give unto them the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ so that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened so they could know the hope of their calling and the riches of their glory. That's why the Apostle James tells us to count it all joy when, when we get into these problems. What? Yes. That's where it's at. And, and it may take us years. It did me. And I'm, I'm not there yet. 
But I know there's truth in those verses. I know that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to fear anything. Why? I'm born again. I've been given a name that's above every name. I'm a king's kid. I, I'm Listen, we're there already. We just don't know it. We've been given victory. Man, that, that's, that's the whole prophecy in, in Isaiah 61 uh, of the coming of the Messiah. And here you and I, we have these things right now in our lives, and there's nothing we need to worry about. There's nothing we need to be concerned about. We do. But as we're growing, hopefully a lot of that dies off. Now we're and Paul, now listen, don't think we're ever gonna we're ever going to arrive before heaven, because we're not. Apostle Paul, and I mean, you know, we all admire the Apostle Paul. He says, I never arrived. I, I never got to where I wanted to go. There are always going to be things in our lives, but that's where we exercise our faith. And we do that by not looking at things the way we want them to be. Okay, I'm going to bust myself out. You know, a lot of you are familiar with the Jesse Smollett situation. Now, I was hoping that they throw the book at that guy, and I guess they did. I got a text uh, that they did. But, you know, when it was brought up to me that the verdict was in today, I thought, man, I, I hope I hope they nail that guy. And then the Lord spoke to my spirit and said, son, what about his salvation? Oh, I, I was I was kind of reveling in, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, if he's guilty. I only know, you know, the little bit that I know. Uh, but if he is, you know, of course, judgment. But what about that grace and mercy? And the Lord got me. And I realized that what's more important than the book being thrown at him was his salvation. Wow. See, that's where we're growing. That, that's where, you know, we can see it's, it's okay to have those feelings as long as those feelings don't have us. Now, you know, I, you know, uh, we'll drop that. Isaiah 55. You say, I thought we're over in Romans. Well, we're, we're getting there, okay? Isaiah 55, uh, starting in verse 8, real quick. God's telling Isaiah, he says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, which we, you know, it doesn't matter. You can take that those rockets up into the second heaven, but you're not getting to the real one. That's the third heaven. Because the heavens are higher than the things here on earth. God says, so are my ways higher than yours. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And then God anchors this when he says, because, you know, just as the rain comes down and snow falls from the heaven and it doesn't, it doesn't return. Okay. Rain doesn't fall up. Okay. Snow doesn't fall up. Okay. It falls down. No matter what we want. I'm not talking about putting a blower on it or I'm talking about in nature. That's what happens. And it can't be changed. That's what's going on. And uh, so as the rain comes down, as snow comes down from heaven and returns not thither, but it does what? It waters the earth and it makes it to bring forth bud, the bud that I may give seed so that God would give seed to the sower and then bread to the eater. See the process here? Now, you know, society has done everything it can. It messes with genetics. It, it changes, you know, like wheat today. Do you know that? Do you know that most wheat takes a season to grow? Okay, but now because of the genetic altering that they've done, people can get five to even ten times the amount of wheat in a season that they used to get because they they buy seeds that are genetically changed. Now you say well that that's pretty cool. Well it's good if you're all, if you're in it just for money, but if you're in it for nutrition, wheat today, look it up. The the store the 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 um, um the people out there, the people in the know, the scientists that tell you now about the wheat today. The wheat has been genetically altered to the point where our bodies 
desire more, more, um, it's part of our obesity in that when we eat the wheat that's grown, which is grown everywhere now, all the wheat, it's, it's all genetically altered, all the seeds, you know, they change the seeds, the seeds don't even reproduce themselves anymore. And, and with those seeds, it makes us to, to crave over 500 more calories naturally in a body that, that doesn't normally do that. It causes obesity in our lives. And, and it's wheat, but not. All the nutrition has been taken out of it. It fills our belly, but it doesn't fill us unless they put stuff in it. You know how much food, how many ingredients they have to put into food. That's not real wheat. Well, it's the same thing with the word of God. And God has, God has a thing you know, for all of you that are the pretty face, for all of you that are the pretty nose or mouth or ears or, you know, the pretty hair, I think hair is overrated, but, you know, praise the Lord, because not all of us are that. And, and praise the Lord that you are, but, but you're not any better than the armpit or the hand or the foot, because that pretty face can't walk. And that pretty nose might be able to smell but it can't pick up with the hand. See, we all have a part in the body of Christ and the devil's doing everything he can to get us to be or desire to be something that the Lord doesn't want us to be. And Michael, if you don't hurry up and get into these other verses, you're not gonna be able to prove that from the word of God. I can say it, but I need to prove it. So it, it brings bread then to us. And God says, so shall my word B, that goes forth out of my mouth. It is not going to return unto me void. It's going to accomplish that which I please, and it's going to prosper to where I send it. So we need to, that's why in the prayer tonight, in the uh, congregational prayer, we prayed for the Lord to loose, manifest, perfect, abound in our lives his will. Lord, let us do your will on earth here in our lives, just as your will is done in heaven. So starting in verse, we left off in verse 9 of Romans chapter 12. So we're going we're gonna to go back there. So let our love for each other. Wow. I don't know about you, but right there. You know, I, I truly love a lot of people. I, I, I'm, yeah, I truly do. But there's some I don't. But I know I need to. That Jesse Smollett thing. You know, boy, I'm telling you, I just want to, bam, you know, get Denozo in the back of the head. And, and uh, but what about his salvation? That's the more important thing. Let our love be genuine. Let it be real. Because I've been in the churches. I know you have too. Oh, so good to see you. They're lying. Now, not everybody, but I'm telling you, people are filled with demons. And, and, and as Christians, we've allowed these demons, they rule our personality. They, they, they can't rule our, our, our temperament, but they rule our personality. The way, they rule the way we present ourselves to other people. I mean, you just go, and, and, and you would think that nobody in a lot of churches has any problems at all. There's no testimonies. Nobody's going to be able to say anything. You know, the laity isn't allowed to say anything, you know, in a lot of churches. And, of course, you know, there's no deliverance. I mean, <laughs> These pastors, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm beyond dumbfounded that when somebody comes up and says, Pastor, I have a problem, well, here, take a pill. Or here, let me send you to some counseling. You can't counsel demons out. They love it. They're the masters of counseling. They've got to be cast out in Jesus' name. What, what do churches do with people, with pastors whose congregation has demons? Well, they don't do anything because they don't even talk about it. The pulpits are silent about this. You talk about sin. You talk about unrighteousness. You talk about evil in the church. That, that, that's where we should start at the pulpit. These things aren't even, they're not even mentioned. A lot of pastors, a lot of preachers won't even talk about these things. Well, it scares people. We need to be scared. We need to know what this adversary can do with, in our lives. We need to know what the demons can do. 
Boy, they can do a lot of things in our lives. And we're clueless, even in deliverance. A lot of, a lot of deliverance people, even myself, none of us have arrived. Let love be real. Let it be without dissimulation, real. <clears throat> Abhor, detest that which is evil. Hate it. Hate the things that are evil. Well, I don't really know if that's evil. What does the word of God say about this? Well, I, you know, my pastor, he, he says, forget about what the pastor says. What does the Bible say to you? What does the Bible say to me? When I read my Bible, you, I would just wish you knew how many times I would read, I would want my Bible I'm reading that it would, that it would talk to me about somebody else. It just, the majority of the time, now, unless, you know, as the pastor, you know, the Lord speaks to me about different things, but as, as a brother, as a, as a regular Christian, when I read the word of God, it's always talking about me. It's always convicting me. I want it to convict somebody else. But no, I'm the one that needs to be convicted. Abhor that which is evil. Get a good, get a, now here's a, here are soul ties talk, cleave. Comes out, comes out of things that knit themselves together. This can be good or bad, Romans 6, 16, I mentioned earlier. Glue, join, join to that, okay, abhor, detest, don't like. You say, well, I still, I still have evil in my life. That's fine, as long as you know it's wrong. As long, you know, if, if, if we'll show the Lord that we mean business, he'll move in our lives. He'll do things. If God knows that we don't care, Listen, this is, this is what happened to the Jews of old. You know, even when they were doing the holidays and when they were, they had the priests where they were supposed to be, but it, it was just rogue. It was just, you know, it, it wasn't in their heart at all. And God says, get, get that stuff away from me. I hate what you're doing. Because it didn't mean anything to them. Listen, does it mean anything to us that our Savior, that God, came to earth as a human being and then was spit on, was lied about. People wanted to kill him when he'd tell them the truth. They wanted to throw him off mountains and, 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 you know, push him over cliffs. And they wanted to, they wanted to stone him. And when he got to the cross, he couldn't even recognize who he was. The Bible says nobody could tell his visage. Nobody could tell who he was. Not even his mother. His mother wouldn't have known him. A mother knows her children. Her, his mother wouldn't have known him had she not walked up Calvary with him. If those, that, if they didn't know, and then look, look what nature did. Nature freaked out. Does that mean anything to us? That's a big deal. Wow! I mean, something happened. Cleave, join yourself to. Physically, spiritually, mentally, cleave yourself to that which is good or those that are good. See, that's what the testimonies were today. Do you hear those two early on, both, both male and female? You know, it, it, that's us. That's us. We crabby, grouchy. How are people ever going to see Jesus in us like that if we're always like that? I'm not saying we can't be crabby and grouchy. Yeah, yeah, I am too. Sometimes. If you ask Joy, she'd probably tell you more than what I'd admit to. But if we don't let our light shine, if we don't let people know that there's something different, I love smiling. I, I, when I'm outside, I smile. If I catch a person's eye, I smile at them. <clears throat> I think it's important. Be kindly affectionate one to another. With, not just be affectionate. This is, this is where we all come up short. But that's because we got demons. That's because we've got things distracting us from the word of God. 
That's because we need deliverance. That's because we need to repent. That's because we've got too much TV. We've got we've got too much worldly magazines. We've got you know too too much too little. I mean, you see all the jokes today of people with their with their communication device. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know everybody everybody's just hey, I, I I caught myself. I do this myself. You know, we're all around somebody and we could all be together, and everybody's looking at their phone. I know there's one or two of you out there saying, well, hey, I don't have a phone. <laughs> yes. Or, or you don't do texting and just like my good brother, Pastor James. Uh, you know what? I need to look at my time. I'm just going, here we go. Years ago, I was so burdened down with these. How I dread that I ever started getting email. <gasps> oh, you have mail. You know, remember the movie? You have no, oh, isn't it exciting? No, no, it's not anymore. I <laughs> mean, you get, but it's just wrong. So Pastor James says, how, how do you take it? He's, he's, I don't do that. I just like, oh. see that boat sailed on me already. I wasn't able to jump off the one that I was on. I know there's not a godly envy, but Praise God. Pastor James, <laughs> what a, if, you, if you still don't do email, I sure hope you don't. What a blessing, brother. What a blessing. Be a kindly affectionate one to another. And, and why is this important? Well, because it's a very dark world out there. Now, don't, don't let all these naysayers think that there aren't as many out there as they say there are. Okay. The devil's just, the devil's just, you know, people who are drunk, you know, people who want to get attention are always talking louder. You know, there are some really still, I mean, there's Christians waking up, there's there's individuals, uh, there's other people who just know, you know, something uh, is not right. But brothers and sisters, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring somebody else other than yourself do you know that there's something uh you know what, what's that old earthly uh, uh, adage that uh, uh, that uh, uh that if 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 it's about you uh so you're you become a very small package i forget what the saying is but it's about other people you say well why is anybody going to know about me well give and it will be given back to us See, if we'll honor other people more than what we try and grab honor for ourselves, how, how are we going to get honor back? The Lord's going to honor us. And the Lord's going to lift us up. And the Lord's going to make everything okay. We don't have to position ourselves. We just need to try and be obedient. In honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business. Stupid work job. Can't stay. I hate my boss. What a jerk. Not slothful in business, but being fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. We serve the Lord by doing the things on our job that we're supposed to do. That's what I learned. Literally, not just from the word of God, but literally. Rejoicing in hope. Hope, 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 I'm hoping to get a paycheck. I'm hoping to get the 12. These are, these are so bad. Man, what world do you live in? Don't let the demons do this to you. you you've been given a name that's above every name. I mean, you are a conqueror. You and I. Rejoice in hope. Hope. You know what? Don't be the Eeyore. You know, Pooh walks up to Eeyore and says, a beautiful sunny day, and ER says, Yeah, but it's probably going to rain tomorrow. No, that's not the hope we have. Our hope is yay and amen. Our, our hope is that it's already there, it's already taken care of, even if we don't have it. That's how our faith gets built. Rejoice in hope. Patient, patient in tribulation. Goodness. The second something comes in our lives, we react. We get blown over with everything. The second something is done, we react to it. That's why our souls need to be restored. 
These demons are fragmenting us all over the place. Why? Because we're in agreement with them. We need to follow an agreement with these demons. Rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Now, I'm not the best. I really don't like my prayer life. I'm just going to leave it at that, okay? But when I hear something, somebody calls me, somebody texts me, I get an Amber Alert. I, I do, I now I, I have failed this, but I've, I'm over 50%, okay? So I may be 50.1%, but that means I'm better. Well, I try to be instant in prayer. Because I have had way too many times, somebody, would you pray? Yeah, sure, no problem. I either forget or I forget. Sorry. That's why you all have to remind me of things. Continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. Listen. If we can be a blessing to somebody, be that blessing. If you can't, don't. It's okay. The Lord knows. But you and I got to where we are today because God brought other saints into our lives that told us about something, that provided something for us, that showed us something. Distributed to the necessity of the saints given to hospitality, bless them. Hey, should I go into this now? No, I'm out of time. I better not. I'm going to read it, but I'm not going to comment on it. <laughs> I'll pick up on this, Lord willing. Who knows, maybe even Sunday, Lord. What do you think? I'm chomping. <laughs> bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind, one towards another. Be of the same mind. Mind not high things, but condescend. Put Lower yourself. I will not. Okay, don't. To men of low estate. How are you ever going to witness to, how are you ever going to get to a low estate person if you don't lower yourself to that? It's not talking about be a sinner. It's saying that, hey, we were all low estate. Let's not forget where we came from. Be not wise in our own conceits. Yeah, I'm going to have to come back for that. That's all. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole other message. But y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, the demons are trying to ruin our lives. And, and we just need deliverance. We need to come out of agreement, uh, as you heard in the testimonies. Man, just start repenting. Just tell, listen, get with the Lord and say, Lord, I, man, am I? Am I messed up because I'm either deceived or I don't know? And I just start confessing things and say, and you'll just start. Now, maybe not all of you, but another one confirmed to me. This is many, many people have confirmed to me and deliverance people that when they start confessing sins, co host spot that. That when when uh, when I start when the Lord flags me says son blah 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 I'm, oh Father and Jesus I, I repent yeah, I want that in my life and I just start yawning and I'm thinking am I getting deliverance you betcha do self deliverance do it tonight in the shower I need it reminds me I need to do that tonight in the shower. So make sure that you know this Jesus I've been talking about. All you have to do is ask him to come into your life. He is such a gentleman. That, that, that's another reason why the ladies are, they're more apt to these spiritual things because they love gentlemen. They, they, they love men that are real men. And, and you know, and I, <laughs> and they love men that are real men. And that's who our savior is. He's, 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 he's the greatest friend brother guy he's just the best he'll never take advantage of us he'll never take us for advantage he'll he'll as the saying goes i mean just everything is right everything is holy everything everything is above board there, there's no hidden agenda with our savior make sure you ask him to come in your life and save you from your sin now, that's the important thing is that that's the sin issue we've got, we've got to deal with that but if you've done that 
you know, and the Lord's come in, he's going to start changing you from the inside out. Your growth may be fast, but it's probably going to be slow like most others. And that's okay. Just let the Lord do what he's doing in your life. But if you're driven, harassed, and tormented, and this is producing a compulsive behavior in your life, slowing down, stopping, or turning around, your spiritual growth and progress. This is what demons are doing in the life of the believer. Jesus gives the remedy for evil spirits. He says, these signs shall follow them to believe. It used to come up on that screen, but maybe it will when you say, I need to learn how to do that. These signs shall follow them to believe. In his name, we cast out devils. Well, we also believe the gifts are for today. We also believe that God heals today because it's a smorgasbord. God spreads his table full for all to come and feast from. So I love you all uh, very much. Thanks so much for spending uh, the night. I know it's late for some of you. And, and it's my earnest prayer that you go to sleep in your armor, wake up in your armor. Uh, and when you wake up, be refreshed, ready, willing, and able to hear from the Lord and do his bidding. I love you all. And I'll see you all later on.